Until now, we've mostly talked about countries. Some of them might have intrigued you, while others could have left you a bit cold. So what, in your opinion, could be the most livable capital city in the world? What are the essential characteristics that a country's capital should definitely have? In the previous video, we embarked on a journey to explore the lesser-known cities of Russia. Now let's talk about Moscow the capital of this vast country with the largest land area. We're well aware that Russia is mind-bogglingly massive, covering around 17 million square kilometers. Moscow, which is considered the heart of this colossal nation, is situated slightly to the east of Belarus and a bit north of Ukraine. So it's not placed in the northern regions where Siberia's freezing cold dominates but rather in a more temperate and warm part of the country along the western border. Contrary to the bone-chilling minus 50 degrees Celsius temperatures you might find in the north of Russia, Moscow experiences milder winter weather with temperatures hovering around minus 20 degrees Celsius. However, a biting coldness prevails during this season. If we zoom in a bit on the city on the map, we can see that it doesn't cover an exceptionally large area. The total land area of Moscow is only 2511 square kilometers. However, the number of people within this area is remarkably high. Moscow undoubtedly, Russia's most popular city, is home to approximately 19 million people. The closest city to it, St. Petersburg, houses 6 million residents. It's quite remarkable that Moscow has been the capital of Russia and the Russian people for over 850 years. Of course, the way to fit this dense population into a small area is through the construction of high-rise skyscraper buildings. In this crucial city of Russia, you can see hundreds of tall buildings. The rental prices for an average apartment here, which are somewhat better than the normal standards, start at 100,000 rubles. The dollar equivalent of these three-bedroom apartments, which would cost you a minimum of 100,000 rubles, is at least $1,000, my friends. So, if you're thinking of living in Russia, and Moscow in particular, where the city hosts billionaires from around the world, the cost of living in this city hovers around a minimum of $2,000 per month. You can find apartments for 50,000 rubles, however. These apartments are at least 20 years old and are located far from the city center or are very small. Almost half of the world's capital cities have a coastline, but Moscow is not situated near any sea. Flowing through the heart of the city is a river known as the Moscow River, and this river serves as a peaceful recreation area for the Russian people, both in winter and summer. This river, which cuts through the heart of the city, has been bridged with small bridges to provide land connections, serving the people. As for the famous Moscow Kremlin Palace, it is located in the very heart and center of the city. This palace is one of Russia's biggest symbols, and almost everyone who visits Russia has a photo taken in front of the Moscow Kremlin Palace. Today, it is also Putin's official residence. Since it's the city of high courts, the center of the country's administration, and the playground of wealthy oligarchs, you can often see luxury official office official vehicles with sirens blaring, causing traffic jams in the city. Let's also mention that in Russia, there are many palaces with the name Kremlin. On the other hand, the famous Red Square, as it's commonly known in English, is of course located in the capital and the square's surroundings are paved with cobblestone roads and there's not a speck of litter in sight. Red Square is the most popular area where tourists visiting Russia and Moscow spend their time. 
The architecture in this city's lifeline is built on such a foundation. The square here is so vast that when presidents like Putin make speeches or on national celebration days, Red Square is filled to the brim with millions of people. Another symbol of Moscow, the historic St. Basil's Cathedral, stands proudly in this Red Square and is one of its greatest icons. Currently, there's not a heavy influx of tourists from abroad to the square. The reason for this is Russia's chilly diplomatic relations with the West, and Western airlines have reduced or halted their flights to Russia. However, Russia's large domestic population and abundant resources keep them from being too dependent on the outside world. Therefore, their capital is never an empty and quiet place at any time of the year. The biggest indicator of this is the never-ending festivals held in Moscow. If you're lucky, you might stumble upon these eye-catching festivals when you visit. These festivals may be ordinary for the locals, but I'm sure they'll be quite intriguing for those coming to Moscow from the outside. Nowadays, much of the world is still experiencing the summer months, and in Moscow, people are still strolling around in short sleeves. If I were to show you a bit of the bustling life there, I can say that the city is extremely lively, both during the day and in the evening. Despite the impacts of history, Moscow offers an active and comfortable way of life. People fill the streets of Moscow with their groups of friends, and almost no one walks alone. Some sit on benches with their friends, some excitedly share stories in cafes, and others have their photos taken by photographers in the streets. The photography part is important because when you go to Moscow, you might come across something you don't see very often. In the city center, you'll find photographers wandering around with professional cameras, capturing the beauty conscious Russian people for a fee. This way, the people being photographed have immortal memories and someone else earns a living. In fact, some photographers have raised the bar so high that they choose a busy spot in the city, set up a backdrop, and provide a more professional background for those who want to have their photos taken. In fact, there's really no need for that because every corner of Moscow, its parks, rivers, streets, and architecture provide ample opportunities for taking perfect photographs and being photographed. Especially the city's architecture, reminiscent of Western European styles, doesn't fall short and each of these architectural wonders holds iconic status for the country. Whatever you expect from a capital or an ideal city to live in, Moscow largely meets these requirements. If you want to go to a restaurant, you have hundreds of options in front of you. If you're tired of going to the same park or nightclub, there are hundreds more to explore. Or do you enjoy meeting new people continuously? Moscow has more new faces and new people than you can imagine. The best part is that the country, Russia offers you the highest income earning opportunities available. If you want to live in such a vibrant city with magnificent architecture today, you'll need a net income in the range of $3,000 to $4,000 per month in Moscow. Otherwise, Moscow's luxurious lifestyle could strain your budget. If Moscow is too expensive for you, but you still want to be in close proximity, the city of Vladimir, just east of Moscow, might be an option. Further east, there's Kazan a large city with a vibrant atmosphere. Or perhaps you're looking for a less populated but developed city near the Finnish border. That would be St. Petersburg, located north of Moscow. Moscow doesn't just attract adults. Young people from all over Russia flock to the city as well. This is because the country's biggest technical universities are located in Moscow and young individuals come here to receive an education that can lead to international career opportunities. Today, Moscow boasts 13 universities, making it a city that appeals to people of all ages, not just adults. On the other hand, you can see a lot of people taking photos and being photographed in Moscow because Russians, especially Russian women, really love having their photos taken. Even if you take their pictures without them noticing, when they realize it, they don't react aggressively or angrily. Instead, they smile and pose for the camera. Indeed, Russians often have their phones in hand, 
constantly taking photos of themselves, even if you're not photographing them. It seems that Russians don't just seek approval from the outside world, but from themselves as well. When you look at people's faces, you can clearly see the characteristics of the Slavic race. About 8 out of 10 people have fair skin, and they are often blonde. Consequently, many Russians have blue or green eyes. Beauty, of course, is subjective, but there's no denying the global fascination with the Slavic look. Russians seem to be aware of this attention, which probably contributes to their high self-confidence. Moreover, Russians dress quite elegantly, not just when they're going out at night, but even during casual daytime meetings with friends. Russia is a country belonging to the orthodox branch of Christianity, but the country's religious structure and governance style don't intervene in the clothing and lifestyles of its people. People can freely dress and live as they wish, and there's no societal or governmental pressure on them. They enjoy their freedom. In Moscow, people dance not only in venues, but also on the streets. Their zest for life is by no means lagging behind Western European lifestyles. They are full of energy and exhibit fun-loving behaviors. The high motivation of Moscow's residents also provides a livelihood for young people who want to make money by playing music. Musicians playing various instruments can be found on every corner of the streets. So while strolling through Moscow, you might constantly hear beautiful melodies. Furthermore, in the evening during sunset hours, Moscow's sidewalks start to fill up with people, and you can hardly find an empty pavement. Even if people don't go to cafes, they fill up these parks and sidewalk areas with their loved ones. In fact, in Moscow, some people park their cars in a corner and open their car trunks to enjoy hookah. This is not an uncommon sight, and those who can't find space in parks take their hookahs and drinks and enjoy the open air in the trunks of their cars. Some prefer to spend time chatting by the green banks of the Moscow River instead of eating and drinking. Or some Russians may use benches for different purposes in the evenings. One notable detail on Moscow streets is that, despite being quite young, people consume a lot of tobacco products. You also won't see a large elderly population of over 65 in the city. Almost all the people you encounter on the streets are under 50. Elderly people are usually seen in the metro and don't draw much attention on the streets. Speaking of the metro, it's worth noting that Moscow has one of the world's largest and most extensive metro networks. This city boasts a transportation network detailed enough to match the splendor of a capital, and what's more, Moscow's metro stations, like other Russian metros, have quite impressive architecture. These ultra-stylish metro designs, inherited from the Soviets, are truly one of Russia's best features. To show you this better, you can observe for yourself just how elegant and clean each metro station in Moscow is. Across the country, Russia's metro system hosts more than 160 stations on 11 lines. Another noteworthy aspect in Moscow is the abundance of luxury cars. You'll especially see these luxury cars coming out in the evening hours, and each one is absolutely dazzling. No matter where you turn, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Mercedes, and more varieties of cars suddenly appear before your eyes. There's a street in the city called Malaya Branaya, and it's where Moscow's elite reside, where taxes are abundant, and where the wealthy frequently spend their time. So, in Moscow streets like Malaya and Petrovka, you can see the most expensive branded shopping centers and the most luxurious vehicles. In the evenings, you can immerse yourself in the traffic and crowds of these streets. Furthermore, due to Moscow's cosmopolitan and multinational composition, even if you don't speak Russian fluently, you can overcome communication issues with your English. The city's multinational makeup also means it offers dishes that match your palate when it comes to its food culture. Additionally, Moscow's bustling streets are among the most frequented areas for newlyweds. 
People often choose Moscow's elite neighborhoods for their wedding celebrations, and if you see several bride and groom pairs and hundreds of guests gathered around the Moscow River, don't be surprised. The wedding ceremonies of these Moscow residents are not characterized by extravagant music and grandeur. Instead, they are more simple, with intimate gatherings of close family and friends. Today, despite Russia's political challenges, Moscow has a vibrant and secure atmosphere. It seems that this city will continue to be one of the world's most coveted and intriguing capitals. At least the people of Moscow appear content with living in their country, and there are no signs of fear or restriction in their faces. If you enjoy these types of city videos, you can support the channel by liking the video and subscribe to stay informed about new videos. Goodbye.